We're gonna learn how to do this transition today. I kind of imagine it to be like, you know, you got a projector and the film sort of slips and then it corrects itself. Let me show you how to do it. The first thing you're going to do is you're gonna open up your project. You're gonna import the assets that I provided in the description below. That is the film projector sound, the film grain, the light leak, and I think that's it. Oh, and then the other thing you're gonna do is just above the description is the like button and the subscribe button. Go ahead and hit both of those. Make sure you hit the bell if you enjoy this video. So the first thing that you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to figure out where you want the transition to happen. It could be between your A roll and B roll, could be between two B roll clips. I'm gonna use two B roll clips. So we've got this great drone video that I took in Canada. It's great, I think it's great. So I have this B roll opening shot and it's gonna transition into our next shot. So I'm gonna drag that into the timeline. Okay, seems pretty good. And then let's have this be our other shot, the shot we wanna go into. Let's go like this. Boom, drag that out a little bit longer. What we wanna do is we wanna have the intro shot, the first shot is going to be on top of the second shot. And the transition itself is gonna be one second. So that we need to go one second back from the intro clip and one second forward in the secondary clip. Just make that cut, drag this one, make that cut. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the effects panel here and type in offset. We're gonna drag that onto the top clip right here. Now let's go to the effects controls panel. We wanna set the shift to center Y to 19,980. And you go to the beginning, you're gonna set a keyframe and then we want to go to the end and make that 540. Right click on that first one, temporal interpolation. We want to ease out. And then on the other one, we want to ease in. And then make sure you drag it all the way to the end of the clip here. As you can see, we've got our little flicker thing. And that doesn't, honestly, that doesn't look bad right off the bat. We're going to do a little bit more tweaking just to really finesse it. But if you're satisfied with this, that's it, you're done. But we're gonna make it look even fancier. So now go ahead and copy this effect and paste it to the bottom layer. Next, we're gonna go to the effects panel and hit crop. We're gonna drag that onto the top layer right here. We're gonna go to the midpoint of this transition, which is 12 frames in, it's approximately here. Make a keyframe on the bottom right there. What we're doing here is we're gonna reveal the bottom layer by kind of peeling back the top layer. So let's move forward one frame. And now holding option, or I believe it's control if you're on a PC, we're gonna drag this bottom so that it meets right there. We're gonna move forward one frame, we're gonna repeat the process. Drag that up, move forward another frame, drag it up again, forward another frame. One more, one more again. It's coming back down. I'm gonna move one more frame forward. And as you can see the offset, it kind of, it shifts, it shifts down so that the, the frame is now like peeking out from the top. So for here, we're gonna put that all the way to 100%. Now if we play it back, there we go. You can see it kind of like reveals the bottom it's like a tease, you know, it's like a whoop. We start here, creeping up, and then boom, boom, boom. Next, we're gonna add the blur effect. So let's go over to the effects panel, type in blur, and we're gonna grab directional blur. So first, just apply it to the top layer. Let's locate it. Let's go to the beginning of the transition on blur length, hit a keyframe, and then go to the middle. So we can kind of use this as a marker because that's that crop is where we started in the middle. Add a keyframe. Let's make it 20. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did with the offset. You're going to add, I just copied and pasted a keyframe. You can also just hit zero again. It'll make a new keyframe. And let's drag it to the end. We're going to Bezier right there but we want this on both layers. So let's copy this directional blur and paste it on the bottom. All right, we're almost done. Next, let's do the sound. So we wanna find a spot in here that kind of sounds like the projector is getting kind of stuck and then it fixes itself. And 
I just kind of know because I've used this, I've made this transition before and I've used it a bunch. Uh, it's right about here. As you can see, it's like 120 if you're working off of the same file. But I want to I want to kind of make that little like tick happen right when it fixes itself right there I drag it right there. And just because I'm an insane person and I like things to be uniform, uh, I line that up with the transition right there and then let's drag it about a second and a half. So 1.12. 12. Um, and then let's add some crossfades on there. And let's make those bad boys. 112 and 112. Boom. Cool. So this is our next iteration. You know, I, I showed you if you just did the offset on the top thing, that's like one version of this. This is another version. If you want to just be finished here, totally fine. But if you want to add some more flourishes, let's do that. So you've got your little light leak and your film grain here. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the light leak. And we want to find a spot in this light leak where it takes up a majority of the frame. Like it's like all white or something. It's like right here. Oh, right there. I'm going to mark in. And kind of out like that. And I want to put that right where the frame changes. Right there. Let's line that up. And then let's drag the light leak about six frames before the transition starts and six frames after. Then I'm going to add a cross dissolve on either end. And those are going to be 12 frames each. Then we want to set the blend mode to screen and you can you can leave it like that or you know I like to make it just a little bit less pronounced about like 65 percent let's say with opacity or you can just leave it like this. Now let's drag the film grain over here and then you can kind of use the sound effect down here as a guide and make that your in and out point and then same thing with the cross dissolves. And of course, we need to go and make the blend mode screen. Now, the last little thing that I like to do is if you've got a song, you kind of add the, the hit, the music hit, like when the beat drops or something. I'm going to take that. I'm going to put that right where that changes over, right there. Once we've got this finished, just so we don't have to create this every single time, just to save you a little bit, is if you go to the effects, you highlight everything, right click it, save preset, and we wanna call that one second film transition top, and then the bottom, wanna highlight everything there, oops, <laughs> wanna highlight everything there, save preset, film, one second film transition bottom. And then you can find those, go over to effects, in the presets. And so if we remove these, all you have to do now is drag the top one over there, bottom. A couple of cool things you can do with this. You can customize the different things you want. You can add like, you know, when like the films, you know, it's time to change the new reel and there's like the little, the little film burn. It's right on the screen. You can add something like that right before the transition. You can add your own little effects, like a, like a glitch kind of thing. You can, you can take, I know they have overlays where you can actually see the actual film stock. You can try that out, but I hope you guys liked it. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you enjoyed this, if you wanna see more of this. Uh, this is pretty fun. So I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.